This interview is a part of the Oklahoma Historical Society's Oral History Program, Living Legends Collection. This, uh, the original date for this interview is May the 7th, 1971. This interview was conducted by Mrs. Mary B. Roberts. The interviewee is Mr. Charles C. Victory of Tahlequah, Oklahoma. This interview is being re-recorded on October the 23rd, 1985 for inclusion in the permanent collections of the Oral History Program by Judith Michener. Got it, man. All right. Yeah. Your name and yeah. your. My name is Charles C. Victory. I was born October the 27th, 1889. My father and mother, both of Cherokee blood, Jack Victory and uh, Betty Quentin Victory. We was, I was born at Texana, IT, which is Oklahoma now, in McIntosh County. And uh, we lived there for quite a good many years and left there in, in 1898 and went up into what is then uh, Ulugo country. Our, our first post office up there was McFall Post Office. Just a little post office out in the country there, see. And uh, Does it still you shut exist? it off now, you understand? Does it I still shut exist? It off. Just a big store out there. And the post office connected with the store. Yeah, yeah, uh huh, yeah. Right. But uh, the uh, present uh, place nearest where we landed when we move up in this country is Vera, Oklahoma, mm -hmm. which is between uh, Bartlesville and Tulsa. And uh, our, one of my early uh, recollections was there that we worked on the Santa Fe Railroad coming through there, see. And another early experience that I remember very vividly was that uh, we uh, worked with the ranch people there. And uh, a lot of the calves that were born in there, the, uh, uh, they, uh, the, the cows udder were so big they couldn't uh, uh, take nourishment. Mm -hmm. So uh, as one of my jobs was to go out and pick these calves up and bring them to our corral. We had a corral there, you see. And a lot of the cattle was wild, you know, the mothers were mm -hmm. wild. And uh, my brother and I, we thought we were cow punchers anyhow, so we would uh, uh, rope this uh, cow around the... Uh, horns and then snub her up to one place and the one with a leg and stretch her out and we'd uh, milk this cow until she, the other got uh, tits that you call them was uh, enough. Yeah, small enough that the calf could uh, take nourishment, see. Mm -hmm. And uh, we worked that and uh, at one time we had about 50 heavy cows in there. And uh, they turned out to be uh, better calves than the regular calves that run with the mother all the time. Mm -hmm. That's one of the very unusual experiences I had up in that country. Now, if you shut her off, I'll talk to me. Uh, and one of the early uh, uh, experiences I'd had, my mother passed away and uh, left uh, uh, my father with a whole bunch of ch children. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you know, uh, lots of fathers are not uh, very good uh, mothers and housekeepers, so uh, a lot of the duty fell on me to take care of the younger girls and children. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, I had quite an experience of it. One of the things we did was, uh, well, we went to the old Moravian school. At, uh, it's called Oaks now, but it's a spring place then. Moravian. Uh, old Moravian, see. We went to school there. And I would take the children down to uh, Mrs. Foreman. She was a full-blood Indian, lived there, and uh, I'd leave them there, the kids. They were too little to go to school, you know. And I'd leave them there, and my children, our children, all learned to talk Cherokee, and hers learned to talk English. <laughs> I thought that was one of the very fine original things, you know, head start business, see? Yes. And that was, I thought, was a very unusual experience. And one of the things that I remember very definitely, 
we had credit to the store over there, and Mrs. Foreman, she used to go over and uh, buy a bolt of cloth, and she'd make it clothes for all her children, our children too, and all come out just looking alike. See? <laughs> and oh, I did like most all the other children in the community there. We uh, hold cotton and they pick cotton, and we did with everything to make a living. But anyhow, we had a very good school there. Uh, the uh, the Lutherans followed the Moravians in there, mm -hmm. took that place over. And Oaks, Oklahoma now is a very fine place, and they have a great Lutheran mission there, mm -hmm. and one of the very finest high schools in the country. Good. And I've contributed to that considerably all the way along, see. Mm -hmm. Over there, you'll find my name on the plates, uh, places on the house there, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been a very yeah, interesting yeah. experience for mm -hmm. me, see. But that was really the full blood country, see. At that time, we used to take in the stomp dances all over the country and uh, participate in the affairs. And uh, we used to go uh, uh, fox hunting over there, you know. Everybody had uh, foxhounds over there. Mm -hmm. And I was one of the big boys that's uh, kind of uh, fat and couldn't keep up. And they'd keep me around the fire, you know. And uh, I got to see a lot of the uh, fox being run down and caught more than the others did, mm -hmm. see. And I enjoyed it very much. Those are the things that I remember mm -hmm. uh, most interesting. Another interesting thing that we had over there, now I remember that was about, uh, about 1900. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had some wild horses over there. You read about wild horses. We had wild horses over there. Really? Yes, and I know that uh, we had one old sorrel mare over there, a white man and tail, uh, and she was just uh, the queen of the whole outfit. She run the whole country. And she used to come up there and uh, make her work our horses, uh, work them loose and run with them and uh, bite them and make them in her bunch, you see. And everybody tried to catch some of those wild horses around there, free to everybody, you see. Yeah. yeah, and we also had uh, wild hogs over there, too. Didn't belong to anybody. Anybody could catch them, see. Mm -hmm. It belonged to them. And I know that in the early days when uh, we began to, people come to buy and hogs, well, that is one of our pastimes, was to go and uh, get these hogs, you know, and pin them up and sell them to these uh, hog bars that come through there. And it's quite an experience, you know. We'd have to build us a pen, and there's hogs, you can never tame them. And uh, you walk up to that pen and had some of those, and then the first thing you know, some of the hogs hit those logs right in front of you, you know. Uh, and it was really, really something. Had a lot of wild turkeys over there, too. I remember uh, going uh, uh, turkey hunting, uh, hurting at night, and some of those uh, trees over there would just be full of turkeys. Yeah. And you walk up there, and it just sound like a cyclone. There's all those turkeys flying out of those trees out there. And of course, we'd trail them down and sometimes catch them. And we had a lot of deers over there, too. That's in uh, what is known in Delaware County, and now known as Oaks, Oklahoma, in that area. Yeah. Well, that uh, we uh, went to what was known then as the Cherokee Tribal School, that before statehood, see? Mm -hmm. And we had some pretty good schools over there, see? Yes, I heard. And I know that uh, we uh, walked about uh, four miles to school, and uh, boys, and, uh, uh, we generally take the lead, and the girls come along later, and there's a whole bunch of us go together down there, see? And uh, it's one of the early day experiences of trying to get of education, see? Mm -hmm. And- uh, one room school? Uh, was that? One room school? Yes, it was right, all of them right in one room school there, you see? But uh, I, after we left that part of the country, we moved to Collinsville, and they had the city public schools there. And that is where I met uh, one of our Cherokee Indian teachers that graduated at the female seminary, Miss Grace Wallace. Mm -hmm. She's very fine. And uh, I was in her classes there, and uh, she told me, she says, uh, uh, says, you're too big to be going here to these little these kids, you know. She says, you ought to go to the male seminary. Well, I thought that thing over, and I 
I told her if she'd make arrangement for it, I'd try to go. So she made arrangement for me to enter school, and that was uh, in the fall term of 1907 that I entered the seminary. Before I entered there, of course, I worked in the oil fields all summer before I went there. And, and, and uh, we went there, and a lot of them were just about as uh, well, I'd say, uh, dumb as I was. The fact is, I was uh, almost 18 years old, weighed 200 pounds, and was in the fourth grade. And a lot of the others are just about the same way. Mm -hmm. But we did have some very fine teachers over there at the seminary. That's what I heard. And, uh, of course, I played football. I started playing football. I was a, I was center on the first now, build of the that team. real football? That was real football. And I tell you, it was football, too. We played games. Yes, I remember that. Yes, sir. We had a pretty good football team, see. Who did you play? What team? Well, you we play? played uh, the Indian School, Jones Academy, you know. And we played uh, Claremore uh, Military School. I don't know what the military. I believe it's a high school up there. Uh -huh. But I remember playing uh, quite a good many schools, you know. Uh -huh. And I later, uh, when the uh, seminary burned, why, Were you I, there when the fire? I was there when the fire when it was burned. I was out here at the Baptist Church, and they come and told us the seminary is burning. See, and uh, so uh, we were all excited and had quite a trip out there. And did you uh, save anything at all of your clothes? Was it? Did you save anything at all of your? Clothes? No, no, we didn't save hardly anything. I tried to save one of the teachers' uh, trunks one time and almost got caught in the and the flames there, but I was taking too much risk. Mm -hmm. But uh, very fortunately, we, we didn't say that. Uh, the, I believe the records say that that started in the cupola. How would it get caught up there? Well, I doubt it. There's always somebody uh, wanting to burn it down. Oh? Oh, yes. Yes, there's always somebody wanting to burn the seminary down. See? It's a very unfortunate thing. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Uh, was there reason, uh, some personal? Oh, just uh, something, or uh, just uh, uh, some uh, people want to do that. I don't know, but that's one of the things that we was always suspicious of. See, we always watched it all the time. See, well, I to see know. that uh, those who might want to burn it down, we protect it. See, mm -hmm. so uh, I was. Uh, interested in getting education. I knew that I had to, had to, I was what old enough to go to. What subjects did you take? What's that? What subjects did well, you take? Well, we took just about all the subjects that you'd have in an elementary school, see. Uh -huh. And, of course, uh, as a, the bunch that I was with, there's about 12, 15 of us, just about as uh, big in, as I was in starting yeah. fourth grade. And we had uh, Walter Scott. Now, he was one of our teachers here. Uh -huh. And he was a mathematics teacher, and he's very fine. And uh, we had, uh, well, let's see, cut that off now. now. Uh, let's see. Uh, John Murdoch was one of our teachers, uh -huh. and he was a very fine uh, young fellow. He's a graduate of uh, Arkansas University, as I believe I remember it, and we had a, we had a very beautiful young teacher over there, and... Uh, Let's see, her name was, uh, let's see, shut off. Okay. Yeah, we had a very fine young teacher there, and she's very beautiful. Her name was Cheney. And uh, John Murdoch and this Cheney girl got married while he's there, see. And I know that one of the and things that. They went on to be representative? Yeah, yeah, they, uh, John Murdoch, uh, I'll tell you a little story before I get to that. John, Mur uh, John Murdoch uh, told uh, uh, one of the boys, my good friend, you know, mm -hmm. and he told this boy, f this friend of mine, he says, that Victor boy, he's got it if we can just get it out of him, see? <laughs> well, of course, that uh, thrilled me, and I never went to class after that that I wasn't really ready. Yes, sir. That was the power that started me back in 1907, mm -hmm. and I went on to, of course, to graduate from Northeast in 1914 and Oklahoma University in 1918 and so forth. See, it gave me the thrill. Yes. I have often wondered why all school teachers wasn't capable 
of uh, enth enthusiasm their kids, motivating them That's right. uh, that way. That's right. And uh, John Murdoch went on to be uh, Representative John Murdoch from the uh, state of Arizona. And he was very fine. He headed the uh, Indian Affairs Group. Mm -hmm. And uh, Myrtle Cheney Murdoch, his wife, uh, she, for years, uh, was in the Capitol there, and she was a guide around there for years. Wow. And she was a wonderful, wonderful person. Mm -hmm. I, my different trips to, uh, uh, to Washington, I'd go to see them. Mm -hmm. And on one occasion there, uh, John Murdoch was, uh, uh, oh, Toby Morris from Western Oklahoma. He has chairman of the and uh, and uh, Mr. Uh, Murdoch told uh, Toby Morris says, uh, says, Mr. Chairman is a member of this group. I'd like to have the floor for a little bit. So uh, John Murdoch, he says, I have, since I've been uh, chairman of this Indian Affairs Committee, said I've had a occasion to visit a great many Indian children, boys and girls all over the country. And I've had uh, occasion to uh, see my children, my boys and girls, become leaders. <laughs> so he said, this is another instance of uh, my boys and girls becoming leaders. Mm -hmm. And of course, he gave me quite a bit of praise yeah. for becoming a leader of our Cherokee tribe and spokesman for them before this uh, committee, uh, which I enjoyed very much. Oh, yes. All right, et cetera. Um, I was on the occasion to be in Washington just recently, and I inquired about the uh, Murdochs. And uh, I was informed that uh, John Murdoch and uh, Myrtle Cheney Murdoch, his wife, who was a very fine person, had moved back t to uh, Arizona to live the rest of their lives out there. Mm -hmm. All right, et cetera. Well, I was, uh, we had out there what they call primary students and students who paid their way. And uh, uh, one of the duties of those who didn't have $5 a month to pay for the grocery was is to wash ditches and do other work, you know. Yeah. So me and my brother, we were, uh, he's a little red-headed boy, and uh, he and I would team up on a table, you know, to wash the dishes and everything. And we got to be really experts, you know. <laughs> and, the, uh, and we did a lot, of, a lot of work around there. And uh, one of the things that I remember was that uh, uh, those uh, boys who were not 18 years old, they weren't allowed to chew tobacco. Oh. If you got 18, why well, then you could uh, chew tobacco. So I uh, used to... Uh, one of the things we had to do after it was allowed to chew tobacco, we had to come and uh, scrub the the stair steps. Oh, yes. Because we were allowed to chew, you know, on the other, we'd spit in the corners going up, you know. And we'd have to go over there and scrub those stair steps. <laughs> <laughs> and we had a lot of experiences out there and uh, very happy. And I remember one occasion, it had a big snow out there, so we dismissed school and all went to rabbit hunting. And <laughs> we brought in a whole, uh, whole bunch of rabbits, you know, and had a big yeah, time out of that. Too. Yeah, one of the joys we always had was uh, coming over to the female seminary, you know. Uh -huh. uh, coming over and visit the girls and my sisters and all uh -huh. of the female seminary. Now, Were, Was that on invitation? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. We had occasions that. Always. I remember that uh, uh, my first uh, visit over there, my sister was over there, and we had a, had a girl from our same community, and they got well acquainted, and she wanted her, this girl to visit, to see her brother, you know. Well, we got out there, and uh, one of the things we played was uh, drop the handkerchief, you know. Yes, well, <laughs> well, of course, I got the handkerchief and dropped it behind this girl, and she really chased me and tagged me, see. Uh -huh. <laughs> I often told her why how that tag stuck, so we married later. <laughs> oh, that was your wife? Yeah. Oh, and what was her name? Her name was McLean, Foster McLean. 
We all yeah. lived, as, we lived at Collinsville, and they lived at Owasa, just a few her. miles apart. Uh, we met here at the seminary. See. And you met her as you played Drop and Hank. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> Drop and Hank, just, and she tagged me, <laughs> and it stuck, see. She literally got her name, <laughs> yeah. didn't she? <laughs> yeah, well, Miss Victor, she uh, later went on to become a graduate registered nurse and went into World War I and came back home. She became a public health nurse. And she and I worked in the business there for years and years as public health nurse. See. Well, I'm It's yeah. a very fine experience. Uh -huh. And as a result of that, I'm uh, locally, I'm very much interested in health work. Of see. course. All right, et cetera. Uh, wow. All right. I, uh, after I graduated from uh, the University of Oklahoma, went into the Army. I stayed in there for about a year, and I came back. And uh, I, I didn't locate in that community. It shut it off. After about a year, I got back from the Army. Why? I uh, went to work for a Texas company there in Tulsa. And they learned that I was a lawyer, and uh, they. Uh, put me into quite responsible work Did there. Did you finish you know. your law degree at Oh, yeah, I, I finished my law degree at the University of Oklahoma in 1918 before I went into service, you see. I see. And I came back and went to the Texas company. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went in there as a stenographer. And I became an accountant then. And I finally went into the land department where we had uh, f several lawyers. And I was one of the lawyers in there and uh, worked for Texas Company about 38 years. And I retired at 65, yeah. 1954, so. <laughs> it was very fine work, and I enjoyed it all, all very much. In the meantime, I was very much always interested in Indians, in our oh. Indian affairs. And I, me and my wife, both being both Indians, we never missed an occasion to attend the Indian affairs meetings, right. you know. Mm -hmm. And I continued to do that. So uh, in 1946, the Congress passed uh, what we known as the Indian Claims Commission Act of 1946. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was acquainted with J.B. Mollum, then chief. And we hadn't taken any steps to uh, uh, present our claims. And I got in touch with him, and I told him that uh, almost two years had gone, and we hadn't filed any claims. So he got busy and called a convention uh, right here in uh, Tahlequah, uh, July the 30th, 1948. Mm -hmm. At that time, uh, we elected uh, members of the executive committee, and we uh, selected our attorneys. Mm -hmm. And I was one of the attorneys he was acquainted with, so he appointed me chairman of a committee to select our attorneys to present our claim. And I named all those attorneys, and we had uh, this day, uh, our speaker today was Earl Boyce Pierce, one of the boys that I uh, selected on that committee. Uh -huh. And uh, the others was uh, Houston B. Teehee here, he's passed away, and uh, the, uh, Norville, and uh, George Norville, and we had uh, Dennis Bush ahead, he's deceased, and... Uh, From Claremont. Yeah, uh huh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dennis is from Claremont, and, uh, yeah. J.B. Milam from the bank. Yeah, bank yeah, Claremont. that's right, that's right. A good friend of mine. So I've been uh, very active in these affairs, and I, uh, uh, Earl Boyd Pierce, went to uh, uh, Washington, D.C., and, DC and uh, picked one of the finest attorneys of our attorneys of record in the whole country, and he's Paul Nebel. And he's uh, today, he's possibly the greatest. Uh, to claims attorneys they are in the United States. I agree. We were very fortunate. And then, of course, we won our claims, you know, and we're still winning claims, you know. You can get some more. Yeah. All right, shut it off now. Uh, uh, one, of the, one of the very uh, pleasant occasions uh, that, uh, was that uh, I worked with our attorneys around here for years collecting evidence to present our claims. And I was one of the, the boys who was uh, interested and presented matters in uh, the Court of Claims. Mm -hmm. The uh, chief uh, 
of the Court of Claims, uh, he says, uh, uh, says, Mr. Victor, I see that you are chairman of this executive committee. And I says, I'd like for you to tell me something about this committee. Because he says, we have uh, people come in here and present claims, and then maybe a month or two later, another boy, a bunch, come in here and say, they're the rightful ones. Yeah. And we want to know that you are regularly elected, properly elected, and that, uh, that you represent the Cherokee people. And I named off all of our, our members of our executive committee, and uh, uh, because I had uh, been the one that appointed most of them, and I knew them all individually. And we just had one fellow on our executive committee who wasn't a degree person. And uh, after the meeting was over, why, uh, the judge told her, the judge of the court had told her, says, uh, uh, Mr. Victor, I think you have, in the parlance of the bull ring, I think you have a blue ribbon committee, thoroughly capable of taking care of the best interests of the Cherokee people. That's right. And so our committee has been working at it ever since that. Day. And you still are connected. Oh, yes. I, at the present time, I'm uh, vice chief and chairman of the executive committee of the Cherokee Nation. And I've been functioning Very as such all these years since 1949. And I'm still working at it, and I hope to continue to work at it. Well, they're very fortunate to have you. What's that? They're very fortunate well, to have you. <laughs> well, I'm very glad to be doing that. I, I'm on retirement, and I, I work with them when I get an opportunity, and it's, there's not a great expense connected with it. It's like Chief Keeler. He doesn't charge anything. Uh, yeah. Sometime when I go places, while well, they pay me per dime, my expenses. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I'm living on retirement. See, yeah. enjoy it very much. Enjoy all the work with our tribes. See, uh -huh. is your wife still living? My former wife was. Uh, she was Cherokee girl. I yeah. told you. Yeah. Uh -huh. No, she passed away in '47. Mm -hmm. And I uh, said she was an army nurse, and she came back a public health nurse, and I worked with her all these years in Tulsa. Mm -hmm. At the time she passed away, she was. Uh, uh, tasting home nursing and care of the sick in 26 high schools in Cherokee County. Oh, and uh, that's where I got my uh, great interest in health. Of course. And uh, I continue that interest mm -hmm. in, in the vigil of the country. I hope that we uh, get a new uh, in the hospital here, and I'm working on it, and we got a good chance to do that. I think so, too. Yeah, and I think maybe that we'll get a, not only a new hospital, we'll get to use the uh, old hospital in uh, connection with the college here and uh, training uh, health personnel. Good. Yeah, that's, that's, that's my ambition. You need, and that's we my need that. So that? We need that. So well, bad. that's what we're working on right mm -hmm. now. And you'd be surprised. I had a letter the other day from uh, uh, Mrs. Hansen. She's chairman of the uh, subcommittee of the interior in charge of health and hospitals. Yes. And uh, I had a letter from her on the 26th, and she told me that uh, not only Ed Edison had appeared before her committee and asked for funds for this hospital and my training program, but she's going to take her own, her own effort Good. and go before that committee Good. and see if she couldn't get a new hospital funded for Teleco and this area. Well, so I'm very happy about that, sir. Yes. Uh, yes, now. In uh, connection with the uh, new hospital here, I have the uh, encouragement of the highest uh, health authorities in the Indian field. Good. For instance, I have uh, uh, Dr. Thomas C. Points, yes. who is a... Uh, uh, when the health department of health education and welfare, mm -hmm. he encouraged me very much in uh, developing a program of health here. And Dr. Mm -hmm. Emory A. Johnson, who is uh, with the public health service and uh, head of the Indian division of the United States Public Health, I have a very fine letter from him. Good. Give me all the encouragement. And he says, uh, it says, if it's possible for you to fund this program of a new hospital, and a developmental training program for health personnel, uh -huh. 
says, uh, why, we'll move down there and go right along where you started just as soon as we can, just right. as soon as you get it funded. Right. And uh, we're working at it very hard, and we hope to get a nice program here. And we hope to make uh, uh, Tahlequah and northeastern Oklahoma the new health center of this That's western wonderful. district. And uh, District 7 covers uh, Oklahoma, uh, Arkansas, Louisiana, Texas, and New Mexico. And we're going to train personnel for all that area, not only Indian, but otherwise, you see. And we hope to make Northeastern a real health center here where everybody can come here and uh, uh, be trained in the health field. Have you, uh, have you asked the help of the Medical Association on this? <laughs> uh, our, uh, our biggest entertainment, I believe, we had over there, uh, we not only, we had drill, we uh, uh, military drill there, you know, uh -huh. and we had football. And I played football all the time I was over there, see. What did you play? I, I started in as a center, uh -huh. big 200-pounder, you know, and I started in the <laughs> center. I finally got to be fullback, and when I came over here at Northeastern, I continued to play, play football all the time over here, see. Uh -huh. But I dropped out when I went to OU. I didn't, I didn't play football over they there. That's pretty busy then. Yeah, that's too big, yeah. Uh -huh. Uh, in the law school, then, do you remember who the dean was in the law school? Oh, yeah, his name was Dean Monette. Yes. Yeah, Dean Monette. He was, a, he was a great boy. And I'll tell you where I got my great interest in art. I am uh, promoting now uh, an art uh, talent discovery program here among the Cherokee. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, and you know, we have a, a great institution at Santa Fe, New Mexico, only for Indians. Yes. With mm -hmm. all the facilities to develop artistic right. talent there. Uh -huh. And I'm trying to discover thing. this talent just as soon as you can find it in the children. Uh -huh. And uh, at work at it, you know, develop them so that they can go out there and become great artists. Good. Yeah, that's working, oh. Donnie. Oh. I was telling you a while ago about developing an art program. Yes. I'll tell you where I got my great art ability. Yes. I was a janitor in Dr. Jacobson's office at the University of Oklahoma. Really? And that <laughs> is where I developed my art. My daughter studied with him. Is that so? <laughs> well... <laughs> But being janitor in the uh, doctor in Dr. Jacobson's office at the University of Oklahoma, really, and that <laughs> is where I developed my art. My daughter studied with him. Is that so? <laughs> well, but being janitor in the uh, Dr. Jacobson office, who trained so many of our great artists, you know. Yeah. I really, uh, while I didn't take art, I, I really appreciate the, the artistic discovery program that they are promoting. And very fortunately, we have money in a Cherokee tribe that can't be spent for any other thing, only education of our Cherokee people. Good. And I'm, this is what I'm promoting. I'm promoting an art uh, mobile. Mm -hmm. Get some lady or somebody artist oh, to go around all the schools and uh, find these artists and give them encouragement mm -hmm. and make a record of it and send them stuff and uh, help develop them That's right. and discover that just see as, that they get an opportunity. Yeah, just as soon as possible. Yeah. Incidentally, my uh, my uh, uh, stepson, uh, he is an artist. And when he had to sit in the corner, you know, like uh, a lot of them do, <laughs> why, he would uh, draw pictures and everything on the wall and all that, you know. And when he'd take him to church, why, uh, we'd give him, a, uh, give him a sheet of paper, you know, and he'd have all the time uh, characters as a preacher in all kinds of positions <laughs> and bring it home with us. 
<laughs> and uh, we got those. Those are quite a prized yeah. possession, yeah. Exactly. And he's using his art now. He's quite an artist, you know. Uh huh. Oh yeah, he's. Uh, and his he his name is. Uh, McLean. His name is your no, his name is McClure. James R. McClure. He's oh. my stepson. Yes. Yeah, and he's uh, the, in uh, um, in Houston, Texas now, and he heads up a division of a uh, of uh, artists. Uh, they sell glassware, you know. For instance, oh. he go, works with... Uh, all types of ceramics. Yeah, yeah all co for instance, you build a big bank building, you know. Oh. Architects. Uh -huh. He goes in there and works on them and finds places where he can use his glass in there, oh. you know. Uh -huh. And a lot, of, a lot of places now, they use so much glass. Of and course. he's a, quite an architect himself, you know. Yeah. And he designs places there where he can use glass. Well, it just fits him good. That's, that's right. It's all right. Yeah. Uh, the um, uh, artist uh, from OU, Woody, and I can't remember his last name. Woody, do you Crumble? remember him? Woody Crumble. We have a Woody Crumble who's an artist. Crumble. That may be who that is. Um, I think I have one of his paintings. I haven't identified it, yeah. for sure, but uh -huh. I think I do. Yeah. But he is a full blood Indian. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, I'm not sure whether he's Cherokee or Chickasaw. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But um, it's the most interesting subject, and I haven't yet gotten it identified, but I'm going to. Oh, yeah. That might be the name. Uh -huh. uh, uh, how would one go about finding uh, Tracing back your Cherokee blood. Oh yes, we can trace my Cherokee blood back to the. My son-in-law. Yeah. Is part Cherokee. Oh yeah. His name, his father's name was Fry. Fry. Hillary Glenn Fry. Oh yeah, we have a big Fry family over here at Salisau. Well. Old time from... Fry family, a great right. family. They came from somewhere over there. Oh he yeah. He is now a Ph.D. and a professor at uh, University of Berkeley in California. Is that, is that so? Uh, he is writing some, uh -huh. and he's making quite a reputation for himself in public relations and oh, things yeah. like that. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, but he doesn't, he can't trace it any farther back than his father. And my daughter is so proud of their children having some Cherokee blood well, that well. she says, Mother, if you ever find out how, I can locate that. Well, I can certainly it tell you how to do it. It's a small much. matter, see. Good. You can go over here at the records and show, find wherever they got on the road. They had to give their father and mother and grandfather and grandmother all the way back, see. It's all on the record there. Hillary Glenn Fry. Oh, yeah. Well, you can get it over there without... They might charge you a little oh, for photo studying and see. Oh, Yeah. That. Okay, better it's, shut that off now. Uh, Where's it? Talk now. I was in school with him there. Yes, yeah. that year. He took case. a degree there, taking some law and taking the other. I know him well. He is my brother-in-law. Oh, he is. Well, he's one of the greatest boys going through the university. There's just no question about it, see. He was uh, inducted into the Hall of Fame. Didn't oh, yeah, that's right. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh, his wife is very, very low now. Hey, that's Harper, right. Uh, yeah. Well, Morris met oh, was very fine. Don't tell me. Have we? I didn't run out of break. It broke. Now you're gone. Now I've got it. <laughs> Maybe we should have shut it off for a while here. The last time it I'll be very glad to answer any particular question that I know right. of. That now, you now it's all right. Yeah. Uh, Do you have any particular questions that you want to ask me? About well, uh, let me tell you a little story that I had when I went first went to the there. seminary. See, uh, before I went to the seminary that fall, we uh, uh, we uh, I attended the Ringling Brothers Circus then in Tulsa before I caught the train out. See, mm -hmm. and I was fascinated by the uh, the Barker at the uh, sideshow. You know. And I memorized his uh, uh, his speech, you know, about the sideshow, you know, yeah. telling all about the hammer, the uh, different animals, you know, yeah. the nyros, uh, what is it, nyrosis, what is it? 
Rhinoceros. Why, yeah, rhinoceros and the hippopotamus and yeah. different ones, you know. Well, when I came over there, I, boys always wanted to show off a little bit. Yeah. And I get up on the table one day, and I was uh, reciting that, you know. A uh, teacher come in there, and he says, uh, uh, says, Hippo, you better get off of that table. <laughs> <laughs> and my nickname from that on was Hippo. <laughs> I was uh, at the seminary, I was in room 59, and you know we had demerits out there. And if you got a demerit, you didn't go to, go to town, and you denied a whole lot of privileges. And uh, room 59, <laughs> they got to be, uh, well, uh, every Saturday morning, well, there's a question whether he's going to get to Coulter Town, and uh, 59 was always penalized. You were always on the list. <laughs> that right? got to be a big joke, you know. Uh, 59, and I was in 59, a whole lot of us, and the uh, teacher would check up on us all the time. They'd catch us doing something mean, you know. And uh, I hardly ever got to go to town. <laughs> yeah. That's one of the books. All right, so you can check that. Um. I, uh, at the time, I considered it a rather thorough because we boys in our class there, as I told you, we started in the fourth grade. We skipped the fifth and went to sixth. Mm -hmm. And we skipped the sixth and went to the eighth. Mm -hmm. Of course, we were old boys then. Yeah. We had big yeah. boys. And uh, yeah. I thought it was rather thorough. But as compared to today, uh, my guess uh, is the city schools and all those, I guess they far ahead of the uh, learning that we had then and possibly the learning processes, you know. Mm -hmm. I graduated here in 1980. Well, now they have more subjects, but do oh, you yeah. think that, the, that they are perhaps more yeah, thorough? Yeah, well, I think they were very thorough. Huh? I, I thought they were, pardon me, I thought they were very thorough over there at that time, yeah. Mm -hmm. And even now, I think we they were thorough then. A, a wider not number of things that are taught now, yeah, more yeah. courses oh, that yeah. are offered. Uh -huh. But I wonder if our reading and writing and arithmetic yeah. and the fundamentals. Yeah. Well, I know that uh, I was uh, one of the students who uh, tried to learn. And uh, a lot of my fellow students were very students who were very serious about mm -hmm. and tried to learn. How did they motivate you to to that? Or were, was it just naturally in you? No. Uh, most all of those boys over there, I know a lot, of, most of our class have gone on and, and uh, accomplished quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Most all of our class have. I asked you this question about uh, the, the thoroughness of the school. Was that what caused it, or was it your motivation? Or well, it uh, depends, uh, like it always is, I think, on the individual, but. Uh, I think they, uh, uh, we had a motivation there that uh, uh, was unusual. That's right. Because they did about everything in the world they could to uh, uh, give a, motivate us and uh, get us to study and be good students. That's right. Yeah, I think so. Well, do you think of something else? Well, let's, let's talk a little. Shut it off. Let me talk a little bit. Uh, as a member of the football team, uh, wherever we go, we would put on a stomp dance. And they had a fellow by the name of Robert Sanders, and he uh, talked Cherokee, and he was a, a very fine uh, stomp dancer. Mm -hmm. And I was his second man. And everywhere we'd go to play football, while well, we put on a parade and a big stomp dance, you know, and really had some fun out of it, mm -hmm. see. And we enjoyed it very much, and uh, I think it was one of the things that uh, uh, the people of the male seminar and female seminar, mm -hmm. that they really enjoyed and carried home with them, see. I, yeah. I think it's very fine, see. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I remember the first time that I came to Tahlequah, I believe as well as I remember it, it was 1904. And we brought my sister down here to go to Coulter's Female Seminary. And we uh, stopped in a, long, a wagon yard right across from the old spring here, see. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember that everybody would come down 
uh, they'd have a, a, a buggy or something and come along with a barrel and they didn't have any water system in the city at all. They'd come down the barrels, that old spring, you know, and, uh, and get loaded up with water, you know, mm -hmm. take it out there, see. And uh, uh, unfortunately, the spring is uh, contaminated now, but at that time, it was the purest water in the country. Mm -hmm. But everybody hauled their water then. So they didn't have a well. They had a lot of wells, but mm -hmm. they hauled their water from this spring right down here, see. <laughs> yeah. And what buildings were there then? Do you remember? Oh, uh, Northeastern? Yes. Well. And in town? Oh, many? yes. Uh, yes, I remember that. Uh, you uh, the wagon yard. Uh, we played, I played football here. And the football free field was between uh, uh, the street down here and the college. All that row of uh, big auditorium, all that, that was our football field. Really? Yeah, we, we played football there, I see. Mm -hmm. And I played uh, for four years after I, I came here, I see. Mm -hmm. Came here in 1910 and graduated in 1914. It was all open. Oh, yeah, and I played there. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I'm kind of bragging on myself as a pretty good football player, see. You must have been. And <laughs> too. Yeah. yeah, I know that one time I I decided I was going to drop out of uh, uh, football and uh, I was going to learn to sing, uh, speech, and stuff like that, you know. And uh, ever, uh, I think the faculty organized against me. Everyone I'd go into, I, they jump on me about not going playing football, see. <laughs> and finally, I had to get up and go to football again, see. <laughs> that, all right, now you shut so, that up. Uh, your size for a center. Yeah. Oh, they couldn't do without you, I think. Yeah. yeah. One of the things that uh, uh, you might be interested in is the fact that uh, we boys at the male seminary, we uh, had what we called a, an oratorical contest, you know. Mm -hmm. We'd write our own original mm -hmm. uh, and get out in the woods and practice it, you know. And uh, boy, you could hear us all over the hills, you know, <laughs> practicing the oratorical contest. And the uh, first time I entered the contest, uh, Herb McSpadden, uh, over here, Will Rogers, the nephew, mm -hmm. well, Herb won it that first year and beat me. And next year, I won it, see. And uh, we come down to the, what is then the old Masonic uh, Hall, mm -hmm. and they had an oratorical contest, and uh, my subject was mother. Oh. That was a... We were going up to the library here. Uh, old Uncle Joe Thompson was a librarian there, you know. And I looked up all what all the great men had to say about the mothers. And I think I had a pretty good oration. And when I got through my oration, why, W. W. Hastings was our first congressman, you know? Yes. And he delivered the medal for me. And the first thing he said, uh, after he came out on the stage, and uh, he talked a while, then he said, well, the victory won the victory. <laughs> <laughs> and they gave me a $20 gold piece for my, uh, my medal. And I ordered me a watch out of it, see. Mm -hmm. But it, that was one of the occasions. And, uh, of course, the, uh, I think the girls were just a little bit emotion, more emotional than the boys were, you know. They were thrilled about yeah. my subject matter, you know. Of course. Uh, about uh, what year was that? That was, uh, I think that was about uh, 19, uh, I believe it was in the fall of 1909. And, uh, of course, the seminary burned March 20, 1910, see. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe as well as I remember, it was 1909. Uh -huh. But W. W. Hastings, a great congressman, yes. uh, delivered, the, uh, delivered the medal, and it made a very fine speech, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was very proud of the fact that uh, W. W. Hastings delivered that medal for me, see. Mm -hmm. Okay, sit there. Uh, graduation. Did they have graduation exercises? Oh, yes, we generally have, uh, we had the graduation exercises and they had the, uh, generally a joint, with the female seminar, they had the graduation, oh. we had maybe, see. Mm -hmm. But they had uh, quite a good like many ceremonies. I never did, 
uh, one never didn't graduate over there. Yeah. See, I was a freshman the year when it burned down. And I came right over here and they gave me credits for mm -hmm. my freshman year came over here. Northeast. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, were the graduation exercises with speakers and valedictorians? Oh, yeah. And yes, we had, uh, yes, we had uh, graduation ceremonies and we, we'd always have a great speaker, you know. And uh, a lot of our people were, we had some pretty great men at that time, you know, yeah. and they'd come over and uh, speak to us. Uh -huh. And we had some great speakers. Enjoyed the, it. The girls always dressed in beautiful dresses then, instead yeah. of caps and gowns and so yes, on. Yes, uh, well, we attended the uh, female seminary graduation too. Uh -huh. and, and that was one of the treats of the season, you know. Yeah. And one of the things that uh, we always did, uh, uh, was uh, May the 7th, like we've had here today, you know? Yes. The boys and girls, we'd all, uh, they'd fix up at dinner, and we'd walk from here down to what is known as Walking Stick, uh, walking stick Springs, over here about a mile and a half. Yeah. And that was our treat, you know? Walk with the girls over there that mile and a half, and have a dinner and walk back in the evening. That was really something, see? Uh -huh. <laughs> Those were occasions that uh, stand out in your memory, you know? Yes, Okay, you uh, should. Uh, one of the uh, gentlemen spoke of how close the chaperone they were, how close the chaperone the girls were. They well, yes, they, I think the girls are <laughs> they, they're really chaperones, see. Yes. Because I used to come over to see my sister, you know. Yes. Well, uh, had a woman here by the name of Wilson. And she is a, uh, she's quite a superintendent, you know. Uh -huh. She took care of the girls, you know. And uh, she uh, wanted uh, me to describe my sister and who she was and all that stuff. <laughs> Before you could even see <laughs> yeah. Well, I'd come to see somebody else. But anyhow, uh, I generally had uh, my sister generally bring down my girlfriend, you know, and we'd have a visit to them. Uh, but uh, uh, they uh, supervised them very strictly. See. One of the ladies told us that, uh, that they were not even allowed to receive mail from the boys over at the seminary. Uh, letters unless they were had their parents permission to receive mail from I uh, I don't know whether they were that strict I don't think they were uh, because I know that I used to write to my sister over there and other people to write to her you see uh -huh. but uh, they were really a supervision when you came over to see them see yeah. yeah you didn't take any wild walks around the countryside <laughs> <see>. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I think they had some very fine teachers, both in the male seminary and the field sem female seminary. They must have I been. think they ha they were really, most of them came from the East. Name some of the, the outstanding classmates that you remember and what they, I understand that a great many of them made good in government. Yeah. And well, uh, one, of the, one of the boys, uh, one of the boys named Alec Robertson, and he lived out at uh, out here in the country, and uh, uh, we had such big feet we call him gunboats. And he is a very nice fella, and he uh, he married uh, uh, Callie Harris, who's here to, today to this picnic. Mm -hmm. And he taught school at uh, Bacon. And uh, I know that uh, I asked him one day. I said, "How does our Cherokee?" Uh, people over in this country uh, compare with the Indians you get out from the western country, you know, the reservation. And, uh, he told me, he said, there just isn't in any comparison. Yeah, really. But he said, uh, he said, uh, comparatively, he says, our five tribes Indians are very alert. Yeah. He says, they're smart people. Well, they came from such good backgrounds. What's that? The Cherokees came from such cultural backgrounds. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you said it all that, I see. One of the boys that uh, was in my class was named Edward Van, Edward F. Van, very fine Cherokee boy from the great Van family down in, the, in Weber's Falls country, you know. Mm -hmm. And when the seminary burned, we were all, uh, it was a tragedy for us. We didn't always go to stop school. Mm -hmm. But he had Cherokee blood and that was, he'd go to Lawrence County, you know, mm -hmm. Haskell Institute up there. Mm -hmm. And he went up there and became quite a, businessman and uh, he worked for the Oklahoma Natural Gas Company tax expert see 
worked there for years, and he'd visit all the counties, you know, and, and uh, taxes and stuff like that. He's one of fine, see. Mm -hmm. And most all of our boys in our class, uh, they were rather outstanding mm -hmm. in, their, in their careers and their life. Mm -hmm. and, and they're a very fine bunch of boys. And I think uh, I've often thought, I was trained to graduate here to be a teacher, and I have often thought if every teacher could have as much influence as my teachers did over me, right. see, mm -hmm. why, uh, it would be a marvelous thing to motivate them or that motivation stick for 10 or 15 years is really something, see. Uh, there's a word that they don't use anymore, the inspiration. Yeah. Uh, now they teach subject matter. Yeah. Purely. Yeah. But, uh, uh, just the uh, one thing that uh, uh, I learned after uh, afterward that uh, they had voted me that, that I would be one of the Action. successful men, see. Oh, yes. And the very fact that uh, John Murdoch uh, bragged on me a little bit. Or, For instance, says he, he's got it in him. Saw. If we can bring it out, I didn't see. It's all what you <laughs> and I never missed a class from there on, and I always had my hand up. Said really, a motivation and enthusiasm that lasted me a good many years. I not only come on over here and stayed and graduated here, I went on to the university and graduated there. See? That's so at, and I just spent a good many years in the educational field, and while in the army, I was a student all the time. I was in the army too. See. Mm -hmm. I was uh, in the Air Force, you know. And what war was that? Uh, that was uh, World War I. One. So, yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, I was supposed to be a. Uh, well, I had training. I trained the Air in, uh, for a pilot. I had to go the, through the training for an uh, uh, artillery officer mm -hmm. and uh, had to learn to fly and all that. As I was in school all the time, I was in the Army. And I was at Fort Sale when the armistice was declared, see. You were, and still in the Army. Didn't you know. quite make it Yeah, I was working at it, so I sure was glad, see. Uh, all right, set it off now if there's anything. I learned, uh, I learned later that, uh, just recently, I learned that the seminars were built by a bunch of Mormons who came in here. Really? Yeah, and I remember that uh, after the seminary burned, I was fooling around on the grounds and picked up a brick that had marked on it. Somebody had marked on it for it was uh, burned and the kill saw us off. Uh, had taken a, maybe a nail and put on there, 1847. And that, and I kept it for a long time. I don't know what become of it. I wish yeah. I could find it now, but uh, I understand all these buildings are built for a group of Mormons come in here and say, that far back? Yeah, yeah, hey, back in 47. Seminars opened 51, you remember? Yes. Yeah, that's open 51. And the brick was made in 1847. Yeah, uh huh, yeah. Well, that's about right. Yes, yeah, uh, quite a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I remember they uh, they got places over there where there's uh, uh, pits where, you know, where they dug to mm -hmm. make their brick and everything. See there. That clay was good for, for yeah, brick? I said, yeah, that's right. That's I wonder how they, did they have kills? How did they make it? Yeah, them? oh, they built their own kills there, you know, and uh, burnt their own brick there, right there on the ground, see. Well, I See, know. they burnt the male seminar and the female seminar and some of these others here. They built some of these buildings down here. Courthouse built in 1846, you know. Oh, oh yeah, that's yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Turn that off and we'll talk a little bit more now. <clears throat> I'll tell you a little uh, unusual incident that happened to me. I had a couple of cousins who I uh, wanted to get into school, and these boys had sold their land, and they had been drinking quite a bit, you know, and I wanted to get them in school. So I brought them over here, and uh, on the way over, one of them uh, took a little uh, uh, liquor in his, uh, had a bottle in his pocket, and, and I told him, you better not take that over there because you get in trouble. And he uh, buried it in the field on the way out there. And I remember where he buried it, see. So 
<laughs> so uh, uh, they didn't stay. So way in the fall, as I got to playing football, why, I went and, and dug that up and, uh, and uh, brought it over to the seminary. And the unusual thing was some boys had uh, sold some uh, clothes and uh, they accused some of the boys of stealing that. So they, the faculty went into all of our trunks, you know, to, to find that suit. Well, of course, I was holding my breath, and they did go in there and find found my bottle of liquor. <laughs> and uh, so um, it wasn't opened or anything, you know. And we had Aunt Dolly was our um, was our health person over there, and uh, I called me in before the superintendent, and he says. I says, how come you got this liquor in here? And I told him, well, I give him the story, you know. Mm -hmm. And he says, uh, well, he says, I, I know you're one of the finest boys here, and you're interested in the YMC and all that, and uh, one of our leaders. And I said, you just take that up to Aunt Dolly and let her uh, use it when, as she sees fit. Yeah. <laughs> but I really sweated blood while... <laughs> <laughs> and then the ball, <laughs> when it got out in school, and the football boys, they just about mobbed me because I didn't <laughs> bring, bring that bottle of liquor down and enjoy it on the football team. <laughs> what a funny thing. I was uh, telling you about uh, gathering up these wild hogs. Yeah. And uh, they had dogs trained that would, uh, one dog would get on side of one of these uh, hogs in order to keep the hog from uh, uh, cutting him up, well, he'd catch him right with the jaw and his side right up to the side of the hog so he couldn't get between him, so he couldn't turn around. Mm -hmm. And we trained those dogs so they'd, uh, they'd lead those hogs right up to the pen where we were, see? And that was a very unusual thing, you know, and we boys around there, that was the only money we got, you know was to gather up those wild hogs and sell them to these mm -hmm. people when they came around. That was quite a sport, too, you see. Yeah. <laughs> well. Talking of the wild hog story, uh, I know we used to see uh, maybe a sow with a bunch of pigs, yeah. and we'd, uh, we'd get up on them, come up on the old kirk, you know, while the old sow would run, and all those little pigs, they'd just squat down in the grass, just as quiet as they just say there and quiver, you know. And as long as you didn't disturb those or the old sow, she'd wander off, you know, try to lead you off. Mm -hmm. But you disturb one of those pigs, you sure will come after you. You'd have to climb a tree. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> okay. So you didn't dare to. What's that? You didn't dare then to no. pigs. <laughs> no, that's right. Back in those days, uh, we used to have, uh, we'd catch birds, you know. And uh, we'd have uh, trees with a lot of leaves on them. And uh, in the wintertime, those birds would gather in those trees, you know. And uh, we could sometimes catch those birds and a whole bunch of them, you know, mm -hmm. in, uh, in those trees. But now that's the early days when uh, we had a lot of wild animals and stuff yeah. like that, you know. And uh, we had, uh, uh, that time we had panther stories, you know, yeah. scream, things like that, you know. And uh, that's pretty scary, see. Yeah. That's what I've heard. Yeah, I shut that on. Uh, <laughs>